Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, Mela. We get messages all the time asking one or both of the following questions. Ava, what is in your pantry? Or, Ava, what should I have in my pantry? We're gonna go through our own cupboards and show you what Ava likes to keep around to cook Italian food, and in the process, hopefully help you figure out what you should have around if you wanna cook Italian food. I'll be honest, this is actually gonna be a bit of a learning experience <laughs> for me too, because I do my absolute best to stay out of the cupboards. I do not know what we have. Hey Ava, where are the capers? Over there, Arthur, in the cupboard. Which cupboard? Try the other one. Which other one? The one with the pasta. The one with the pasta. Do you know how little that narrows it down? Seriously, Ava, I can't find them anywhere. I think we're out. All right, are you ready to bear your cupboards to the world? Sì, Arthur, but did you put them in order? No. This video is proudly sponsored by Ombre Lab. If you're struggling with a health issue and you can't find the cause, your gut may be to blame. It really shouldn't come as a surprise that what we eat affects our health, but what you eat affects the bacteria in your gut, which then affects your physical and mental health. Ombre Labs offers a super easy to use at home test that measures your bacteria level by testing your poop. Don't worry, it's also super sanitary and actually really easy to collect a sample, pack it up in a prepaid box, send it into them. They analyze your gut health and give you actionable steps to increasing the good bacteria in your body. When there isn't enough good bacteria, bad bacteria flourishes. Not enough good bacteria can result in bloating, constipation, abdominal pain, fatigue, acne. It can also result in just a weak immune system. The results will include a breakdown of your personal gut health. How you doing? I'm not joking. I literally just got my own results back minutes ago. It's actually not a joke. Minutes ago. They recommend that I eat, among other things, more celery. That's pretty easy. Avocado. Luckily, Ava just got a bunch. Oh, chocolate. They can also develop a personalized probiotic made specifically for you and your gut. If you're struggling with any of the symptoms I mentioned and you want to see if your poop has the answers, visit tryombre.com slash pastagrammer and you will get $30 off your own test. A big thank you to Ombre for sponsoring today's video. Let's start with that one. So let's see what we have here. Here we have uh, some cinnamon that I brought back from uh, one of my trip in Morocco. And I love cinnamon so much that I could put it uh, everywhere except uh, on pasta. Capers, and actually I prefer capers under salt, but because this time I couldn't find them, I bought this. And this is also a staple in an Italian pantry, so keep in mind capers. Then here we have peanut butter powder. Obvious, it's not mine, because if I eat peanut butter, I eat the real one. But another thing that is Harper stuff. I That's put it on popcorn. Then uh, here we have uh, saffron that I brought back from Italy because in Italy it's uh, cheaper than here in America. And what I do with saffron, uh, I do the arancini, I do the risotto, I season sometimes also my vegetables. My beloved orange blossom honey that I for this, I cut my hands. <laughs> Pine nuts. Also, this is a staple in, in an Italian pantry because uh, mostly if you want to cook Sicilian dishes, you need pine nuts. Here we have uh, fennel seeds. These also are very important in our cuisine and most they are important in my mother's cuisine. So that's why I have a bunch of them. Up here we have some Calabrian spicy pepper because I can't live without my Calabrian peppers. And I use this uh, everywhere. And for everywhere this time I mean really everywhere. Pocket coffee. And uh, actually, these are half mine, half Harper's. <laughs> okay, more spicy peppers. Uh, here we have some nutmeg, because uh, when you make, for example, tortellini, or when you make your bechamel, you need nutmeg. I have uh, the real peanut butter, as I said before. That one's yours. This is mine. This is mine. Baking powder, because I like to bake, so I have baking powder, and I have the American version, but I have also up here 
the Italian version, as you can see. And then uh, some uh, chocolate, because uh, guys who doesn't like chocolate, uh, one piece a day makes you happier. So chocolate, Nescafe. Now, don't think that I drink this instead of uh, my coffee, no, but I have this because I like to make what we call a crema di caffè. That is, a, how do you say, it's not a custard because it's made with, it is made with this, and water, and sugar, and it's uh, good. Uh, one day I will show you how to use <laughs> Nescafe in the proper way. Here we have something that is very interesting. <laughs> and this was a discover of Harper when uh, he was with me in Italy last time. And this is something that uh, in Italy we use after we eat a lot and a lot and a lot. You put in water, you start bubbling, you drink, and all the food that you eat is just uh, goes. <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> what? The way you said that, it makes it sound like it exits your body. No, it's like it helps, it helps you, you digest. It helps you to digest after Christmas Eve, <laughs> the lunch for Christmas, New Year's Eve. It makes room for round two. Yes, or something like that. Ava, we get asked a ton about these peppers and what they are and how you use them. Okay, we bought this when we were coming in Arizona for our moving. We bought this in Natch, New Mexico. Uh, they are very pretty. I should say that uh, I used them uh, maybe three, four times when I didn't have a very spicy pepper. So I kept them more because they are beautiful. <laughs> And here we have some uh, oregano. This uh, was a gift from uh, Harper Sant. So I kept this, but there are uh, differences between this one and the Calabrian one. Here we have some uh, parsley, because uh, in a lot of my dish, when I cook fish, when I cook some uh, pasta dishes, I need parsley. Both of these guys are uh, Italian uh, staples, so things that you need to have if you want to cook uh, Italian. And uh, like this too, we have other uh, fresh herbs like uh, sage, basil and uh, rosemary. Onion, uh, as you see, garlic, uh, other uh, spicy pepper because we love spicy food. Some uh, Roma tomatoes, potatoes, we have uh, squash. And here we have uh, avocado. Uh, now, I need to say that I don't eat uh, avocado very, very often, but uh, for sure I love guacamole. That's why I have avocado here at home. Uh, here we have some uh, cherry tomatoes. I love to use cherry tomatoes, for example, in a salad. I love to use cherry tomatoes when I do my chicken uh, pollo alla cacciatora, when I use, uh, I do pasta allo scarpariello. So if I need to choose be, um, a fresh tomatoes, usually I go for the cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes, garlic, uh, onion, they are uh, other staples in the Italian pantry. We have uh, wool peeled tomatoes. Uh, these are uh, obvious a staple in the Italian pantry. I bought Mutti because I trust the good people from Italy. So keep in mind to have always a can of peeled tomatoes or tomato puree. But pay attention always, guy, that inside there is just tomatoes. Here we have uh, tuna fish. Now. I know that uh, a lot of Americans have a bad relationship with tuna fish. And when I came here, I understood why, because not every tuna fish in a can is good here in America. While back to Italy, we eat a lot of tuna in a can because it's very, very good. And I should say that this is pretty good anyway. Not like the Italian, but anchovies. Now, also for the anchovies, I prefer uh, undersalt, but also this time I couldn't find undersalt, so 
I bought anchovies under oil and also these are a staple in the Italian pantry so if you want to cook Italian food buy also anchovies. Then here we have some dried porcini mushroom. When I'm in Calabria and when I'm with my dad, I'm so lucky because my dad, he is a mushroom hunter, so I can eat the delicious and fresh porcini mushroom from Calabria, but here I can't find fresh. So I bought this dried and I use them to make risotto or I use them also to cook some meat dish. Amaretti cookies. Now, amaretti cookies can have a lot of uses in Italian uh, cuisine. Uh, you can um, make, for example, pasta, you can uh, make a dessert, uh, you can make the stuffing for the pasta. So, if you find them, uh, keep in mind to have in your cupboard. Can I have one? They're almond flavored, they're so good. Uh, they're see, addicting. They are. And uh, I don't want to say that if you can pour uh, some custard here and then close two together, it's like, <laughs> it's a dessert by themselves. So Italians we are obsessed with powdered sugar on top of our dessert. So every time that I make tannoli, sfogliatelle, uh, torta di mele or other dessert I put some powdered sugar on top, some bread and then here we have popcorn and uh, they are not mine. <laughs> You like popcorn though. See, I like popcorn, but I never thought to buy popcorn and have my pantry. Obviously, here we have some flour. Now I have all-purpose flour that I use for egg fresh pasta, for example, or I use it for cakes or pastry in general. And here I have bread flour. And I use bread flour for bread, obviously, but also for the pizza, because bread flour has a higher quantity of protein. And when you want to do pizza, this is a very important thing to, to check. So if you are going to make pizza, have a bread flour. It's obvious, they are a staple in the Italian pantry. But Cinnamon no gram crackers. No. For s'mores. But it's winter. Uh, you can make a cheesecake with them. Can you make a cheesecake with them? Yeah, for the crust. Oh, thank you. Good to know. I don't know until now. <laughs> Aceto balsamico di Modena. Now, Aceto balsamico di Modena is a big word because the real one is aged 4 to 12. 25 years, it's very, very expensive. So what they did in Modena, in Modena they create a much more affordable vinegar. So I use this for my salad, for my vegetables. I really like balsamic, aceto balsamico di Modena. Here we have some glazed. Actually, I don't use it a lot, but sometimes when, for example, I cook tuna fish, I like on a stick of tuna fish to put some uh, aceto balsamico, glassa di aceto balsamico. It's really good. I'd never discovered it until you introduced me to it. See, it's very, very good uh, on, as I said, on fish. It's very good also, for example, on a strawberry. It's very good on a piece of parmigiano. Here we have some good or extra virgin olive oil. What I found here in America is that it's not really so easy to find a real Italian extra virgin olive oil. So I found this brand that is very good, is affordable, is local, so guys, why not? Some Marsala wine, and I use the Marsala wine when I want to cook some Sicilian dish, like for example, cannoli. So I use Marsala. Now, usually I keep a good, but not very, very good Italian white wine for cooking. And here we have a very nice bottle of red wine because when I drink, uh, I like to drink uh, good wine. <laughs> For sure, in your Italian pantry, you need to have uh, aceto balsamico and you need to have a good extra virgin olive oil and a white wine to cook. And this, guys, is my favorite cardboard because this is my carb kingdom. <laughs> 
So as you can see here we have all very good carbs. I brought back from Italy stroncatura, that is the illegal, illegal pasta from Calabria. The Cecco linguine, we have spaghetti alla chitarra, uh, rigatoni. So in an Italian pantry you should have long pasta and short pasta. Guys, it's very, very important when you buy your pasta that uh, you look for a bronze cut. As you can see, the color is uh, more white than the plain yellow that usually some brand uh, have. So find a good pasta made just by semolina flour and uh, yes, bronze cut, guys. Arborio rice. Actually, I prefer when I make uh, risotto, I prefer the carnaroli one, but it's not easy in the grocery shop or on my home here in Arizona always to find carnaroli. So, uh, if I don't find carnaroli, I buy arborio, but if you can find carnaroli, yes. And uh, obvious, also, this is a staple in the Italian pantry because if you want to do risotto, you need uh, Italian rice. Uh, here we have uh, semolina flour or semola rimacinata. This is another staple in the Italian pantry because what you do with the semolina flour? You do fresh pasta but without eggs. And sometimes you can bake also bread. So remember to always have a package of semolina flour. What we have in the fridge? Here we have uh, ricotta galbani. I'm a little bit ashamed of this uh, because uh, this is not the real ricotta and more uh, this is one of the worst ricotta that also you can find here in America but I don't know what happens here in Arizona I went to the grocery shop the other day and they were out of any kind of ricotta or cheese and this was the only one left it's called a global supply chain crisis a huge pork shoulder because uh, I hope that Harper will is going to smoke it. Barbecue in the next few days. Here we have uh, our uh, cheese section that is uh, together with my cardboard for the carbs. This is my treasure. And obviously, guys, we have some uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, the real one. We brought this back from Italy. Here we have a brie, because yes, I'm Italian, but I appreciate good French cheese. <laughs> Here also, we have a Galbani fresh mozzarella. The same things with the ricotta, guys. Uh, what can I do? Leftover Grana Padano. Pecorino, because uh, for sure, guys, Parmigiano or Grana Padano and Pecorino are a staples, they are staples in the Italian cuisine. So um, keep in mind to have always them when you want to cook Italian food. Here we have some uh, good provolone uh, directly from Italy. Uh, we have uh, here we have uh, celery. And uh, guys, uh, as you know, the basic uh, of most Italian sauce uh, is a soffritto. A soffritto is made with celery, onion, and guys, carrots. Do you want to make a bolognese? You need to have these three things that uh, they are another staple in the Italian uh, food. Butter, because uh, butter is another staple in the Italian uh, cuisine, even if we don't use it like French. But uh, if you want to make a risotto, if you want to make a cake, yes, you need some butter. Unsalted butter, because I will never make a mistake the second time. Then here we have uh, yeast. This is a staple in the Italian food, uh, yes, so if you want to make pizza. So keep in mind to have always some yeast for an emergency pizza. Tomato paste. 
Also, this is very important in the Italian food. Every time you want to give uh, the caponata, if you want to give uh, a color, these are calamata olives because I couldn't find the Italian olives, but I really like them. And also, a good olive is a staple in the Italian pantry, so you should always have olives with you to do a lot of stuff because you can add them to caponata to make a pasta you can just eat them as a snack uh, it's like you can do a lot of stuff with olives and here we have uh, lard we share uh, the lard with mexican <laughs> mexican food use a lot of lard italian food use a lot of lard most of the southern italian food and the traditional one our freezer is full of pasta grammar leftovers <laughs> should we take them into the secret room Yes, come with me in our secret room. <laughs> so, we start from here. <laughs> because in my secret room I have my favorite food of all time. And I need to say thank you to my friend Chiro who sent me this from New Jersey. It was a Christmas gift. And uh, this is uh, Stocco. As you can see, it's a dried fish. And I can't wait to cook it. Arper, are you excited? No, it smells like dried fish. It smells like stocco, Arper, it's stocco. <laughs> then here we have some... Sorry, I wrapped it up really, really well because it smells I so know, bad. I know, but anyway guys, here inside there is bacala. Here we have a coffee that actually when I'm back from Italy, and I have my Italian coffee, I don't use it because I prefer my Italian coffee. But if I'm uh, out of my coffee, uh, this brand, I found that this brand is a good uh, substitute. So we bought a bunch because uh, I need the coffee. And here I have my section of dried, uh, as we call it, dried fruit or uh, nuts. Uh, dried figs because uh, these are a staple in my home. Candied cherries, uh, here we have uh, the last piece of candied fruit for my Sicilian uh, dishes like for example uh, cassata or buccellato. And it's called citron I've learned. See this is the cedro. Okay uh, guys, uh, Nutella. <laughs> I'm Italian. In every Italian <laughs> pantry there is a Nutella, so uh, maybe we should say that this is a staple in the Italian uh, kitchen, so <laughs> keep in mind to have always a jar of Nutella with you. And here we have uh, some other pastas, as you can see, because in this home we are full of pasta everywhere. Here we have also some barilla. And why guys I have barilla? Because I love spaghetti alla sassina. And barilla is the perfect brand for spaghetti alla sassina. Then here I have some progress of breadcrumbs. For Thanksgiving, a friend of ours, of Harper, came here. He went to... Harper's friend came here to visit us, to stay with us, to celebrate with us. And uh, he is uh, actually is from Spain and he wanted to cook for me the croquetas. And he didn't think that I could have breadcrumbs at home, but uh, he went and bought the progress. But as you can see, is still closed. <laughs> Bread crumb is another staple in the Italian food, but be sure guys uh, to make your own because uh, uh, I have some trouble with this. Here, down here, as you can see, we have a bunch of uh, Harper's favorite pasta because our friends, they were so nice to send us some uh, fileia from uh, Canada, from uh, New Jersey. See? So, Arpir, now you can be pretty happy with all this. We have very good friends. This is a flower, it's a special flower from Italy. And this is a good flower to make... Uh, panettone. 
So this is the basic that you need to have in your pantry if you want to cook uh, Italian food. Flour, long pasta, anchovies, breadcrumb, fennel, capers, olives, fresh herbs, wall peeled tomatoes, pecorino cheese, parmigiano cheese, butter, short pasta, tomato paste, semolina flour, vinegar, extra virgin olive oil, wine, rice, salt, black pepper, yeast, Nutella, onion, carrots, celery, garlic, spicy pepper, eggs, pine nuts. This is what more or less you need for cooking a bunch of Italian food. Such as? Puttanesca, pizza, calzoni, arrabbiata, cacio e pepe, fresh pasta, fresh egg pasta, frittata di pasta, risotto, salad dressing, pasta with anchovies, aglio e olio, pasta del poverello, bread, genovese fuiuta, pasta al freddo, nutella, tomato sauce, adding meat you can make uh, ragolla bolognese, ragolla napoletana or meatball, you can add chicken for pollo alla cacciatora or chicken cutlet, you can add squid for example for calamari, adding eggplants you can have uh, caponata, adding broccoli for example you can have pasta with broccoli and uh, Believe me, this is just the beginning because we have a lot of other stuff that we can make with all of these ingredients. Do you want to show me one of them now? Are you angry, Harper? Always. For our dish, this time we need to make a broth, but it's a very special broth because we are going to use Parmigiano rind and be sure to clean your rind, scraping it with a very sharp knife. Then we are going to use some onion and some black pepper. This is really unlike any risotto I've ever seen you make. This is uh, risotto cacio e pepe. Oh. Like the pasta, we make also the risotto cacio e pepe. Buon appetito. Oh, that's good. If you like cheese, this is the risotto for you. It's a great example too of how versatile that pantry selection is, you know? It's so, so, so different from say, Pasta with tomato sauce. I mean, just with those basic ingredients, you can create so many flavors. With that mm, ingredients, you can create a lot of delicious Italian food. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this tour of our, I should say, Ava's pantry today. We'd love to hear from you. What are the ingredients that you can't live without in your pantry? Hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao.